Good evening and welcome to the Star Chamber Show live podcast. It is a great Wednesday evening here in Central Kentucky where I, Stephen Zimmer, am broadcasting to you live for episode number 420. And of course, as always, a uh, shout out to the band Far Cry for that great intro music that we so love. Uh, the song Balance, off the album Balance, uh, Pete Fry, great guitarist, songwriter, and hope he's listening out there somewhere. Uh, but yes, welcome uh, to this edition of the Star Chamber Show, and everything is up and running, and we're just starting to get folks in tonight. The first one in tonight is amazing author and screenwriter, award-winning author and screenwriter, Carol Preflatish. And yeah, we're going to be talking a little bit about Carol uh, here in a moment. And uh, yes, and joining me uh, just in a minute or two is the wonderful, the vivacious, the loquacious Holly Philippi, and I think uh, she should be in here. I am in here. I think. Okay, I do see you. <laughs> so make it, Hi, making sure there. There's Carol celebrating a big release week. Uh, we told Happy you about it last week. Happy release week, Carol. That's, I love but, that cover, yes. by the way. Yes. Happy release week. And yeah, that, I, I mentioned it to note to Carol, but yeah, I'm seeing comments on, on several posts, including yeah, even uh, the best-selling award-winning author, Abigail Keem, even commented on the post on what a good cover that was. So, oh, that yeah, is a treat. Yeah. And, and Abigail's not the type. Abigail's to, brutally honest. <laughs> really, yeah. she, she will not tell you it's good unless it's really good. You got that right. So, yeah, just, we know Abigail well. And so yeah. she's not inclined, inclined to I do love that. Her. So, so when I saw Abigail put that up there, that was my, my absolute guarantee that, yes, this is a winning cover. But <laughs> uh, yeah, you get a comment from Abigail. But um, yeah, great mystery novel. Um, I've I had the honor of being the editor on it, and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a phenomenal addition to the Nathan Perry mystery series. But yeah, go out and get it, please. Yeah, it's standalone, so you don't have to have read the first four. That you can read them all as standalone novels. Uh, but yeah, they all go in the uh, Nathan Perry world. A great detective, great character, great ensemble of characters in. Uh, in these books. So uh, you definitely want to check them out. Um, it's available in print and ebook editions. So yeah, give it a, give it a try and uh, try all of them because now there's four, four. And yeah, after Imaginarium, uh, we're going to be doing uh, some uh, big promotions on that. Uh, I, I'm going to be in doing uh, involving the entire series as well as the, this release. So yeah, I think it's going to get, I think this one's going to get some really good reviews, really good reviews. Um, and on that topic, yeah, I want to give a shout out to Carl R. Moore, who today had a new book come out, Red December. Uh, this one is, if you like the werewolves and you're more in the, the horror, uh, thriller horror kind of vein, I mean, it's, it's, a, it is intense. And so, yeah, if you want uh, something that's a little, it's different, uh, it's a definitely a different twist on werewolves and, uh, yeah, the hunt, hunters becoming the hunted and, Upstate New York in the woodlands there. Of course, it's, it's a great setting that Carl knows very well. And he knows that the, the uh, subject matter of this book. And, no, and I'm not just talking about werewolves, but talking talk, talk about the, the woods of upstate New York. He knows them very well. So, And boy, does it come across in this book. Uh, but it's called Red December and just came out today in print and ebook. Uh, definitely highly recommend you check that one out too. We're really excited about that one as well. And so, yeah, two books that we are absolutely thrilled with. Uh, yeah, came out this week, Carol Pre Flattish with uh, Murder and Mystic Hollow and, and Carl Mo R. Moore with Red December. And we will definitely be trying to get both of them on to talk about their books uh, post-Imaginarium uh, when we <laughs> get to fill up our schedule again. So <laughs> keep keep on the lookout for that, folks. It's going to be uh, some good some good discussions. So tonight's guest, we, oh, it's going to be fun. But, uh, yeah, we, do, we always want to give you the updates on Imaginarium, uh, because the Star Chamber Show, of course, is affiliated with the Imaginarium Convention. So I'll keep you up to date, and then we'll bring you the two folks that brought you tonight's show. So uh, tonight, uh, we don't have a whole lot of updates in the past week, but uh, we do have some good ones. We do have some good ones. We had a couple new workshops and a new panel added uh, to the programming, and then we also had uh, a new panelist uh, added as well. Um, so yeah, getting close. It's only about a month away, so definitely you want to get your event tickets set. You can only get advanced event tickets until July the 7th. Uh, 
and that saves you money. It means you get a registration pack pre-made for you to uh, be ready when you arrive, and it also speeds up your check-in at Imaginarium. So lots of benefits to going ahead and getting your advanced event tickets, single or multi-day. Uh, so get that done. Um, we do have maybe a couple more spaces in the main expo hall. Creative Alley is sold out, but the main expo hall, I think, has a couple more spaces. So if you still uh, do want to become a vendor, we do have that. And uh, but yeah, get your event tickets set because uh, it's coming. It's about uh, just a little under a month away. So uh -huh. it's coming up quick. So <laughs> believe me, do we know it? <laughs> so, uh, but the new work workshop uh, editions are. Um, so you want to get published, and the presenter is Tony Acri of Hydra Publications. He's an award-winning publisher, screenwriter, and uh, author, and definitely encourage you to see the or see <laughs> we're an audio podcast here. The recent audio podcast we did, Star Chamber Show, with him just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but he's going to guide you to preparing your novel, submitting it to a publisher, and negotiating a contract. So then, all of a sudden, also we had the care and feeding of an author editor relationship with presenter Wendy Mullick. And this goes into the depths of the editor author world and their relationship and and how to have how to facilitate a good a good working relationship with an editor. I think this is definitely one a lot of a lot of authors will get quite a bit out of. And uh, then we also had a new panel edition with screenwriting tips for dialogue. And that's just as it says, uh, it's creative solutions and being discussed among screen screenwriters to improve your dialogue writing in any uh, screenplay or script. And so, yeah, that could be applied to playwriting as well. Uh, so, yeah, mm -hmm. check that out. Uh, check that out. That's going to be a really good panel. And then uh, today we announced that uh, author, publisher, and editor uh, Thomas Gandolfi is an official panelist. And, and uh, yeah, he's, he's come aboard uh, right here, just uh, pretty close to the event. But I tell you, after I've looked into Thomas, I mean, he is, he is superb. And yep. uh, we're really, really excited that he was able to uh, add us in. Um, I'm not sure which, uh, yeah, there's actually a convention that shut down and, uh, during the weekend that, that we have ours. And, and so he was looking for something yeah. to fill his calendar. And he said <laughs> it was totally serendipitous. Serendipitous and just That's happened to heard about us and, and looked into it and was like, wow, this looks really good. So Tommy yeah, B. Smith. Thank you, Tommy, Tommy B. Smith. Tommy B. Smith. Yeah, that's right. Tommy B. Smith uh, had uh, talked to, had told him about us. And so, yeah, we're really excited to have Thomas uh, Gandolfi joining us. And so, yeah, Tommy and Thomas. Yes. <laughs> Both will, both of course, will be there. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. So, yeah, welcome aboard, Thomas, and very glad to have you. And uh, Holly, do you have any uh, any updates? Anything you need to go uh, over? Other than I'm quite scatterbrained. So, but other than that, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's that time of year again, guys. I've I've tried to finish <laughs> up on schedules. So if I haven't emailed you yet, I will be. And uh, yeah. just just give me time. I'm almost there. I'm almost done with individual schedules. Yeah, it's like the war room. She, I mean, she literally has like usually three screens set up at once, and um, you know, it, it, and and on one of them, I mean, she's got about thirty tabs open, and I'm not exaggerating yeah. either. She has nope. about thirty tabs because I work with yep. about thirty tabs, and it gets to the point where I have to reboot my laptop because I've, <laughs> I've uh, and then got a two and then right now because we, you know, we have the three teenager um, um, grandchildren that are with us. They're getting ready to go to church camp next week, so I am sitting here. Right now, after I just got dinner dishes and everything done because we had to run and get a microwave because ours blew up yesterday. And well, so, uh, yeah, yeah we, we had to do that th this evening real quick. And then we get home. I made dinner, got it done because I'd worked, me and Steve had worked on the computers all day. I was working on schedules and imaginary stuff. And then I get all this done. I just got dishes done. And now I'm having to hem clothes. So I'm buried in suits right now here in my room with my sewing kit and doing a podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> multitasking for the multitasking, win. Multitasking, multitasking for the win, and yeah, it's very, very active world here now. But yeah, it's it's, it's pretty much around the clock at this point. So, uh, but yes, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to the folks that brought you tonight's show, and then we're going to move on to tonight's most honored guest, and it's going to be it's yes. going to be a great one, folks. Going to be a great one. But the two folks that brought you tonight's show are Sandy Lender, 
the genre blender, the one and only. And then, of course, that fine fellow, Ren Garcia. So, yeah, quick shout out to Dewan Hearn. I see Molly Daniels in the chat room as well. Hi, 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 Molly. So, so, yeah, come on in. Come on in and participate. And here we go. A little bit from Sandy, and uh, then we'll go over and, and give you that uh, awesome spot uh, from Ren. Here's Sandy. Author Sandy Lender is an international bestseller with awards for her poetry, short stories, nonfiction, and fantasy novels. And now, now she's about to release her craziest book yet. Humor, fun, a touch of autobiography, and a whole lot of 80s and 90s nostalgia are on the horizon. Visit AuthorSandyLender.com to get signed up for the Sandy Says Read newsletter, or go follow her Amazon author page at Sandy Lender. You don't want to miss out on any of the cool stuff that's coming next. Thank you, Sandy. You are awesome. Always appreciate you so much. And uh, yeah, she's got some great projects coming right down the pike, writing wise. That I have uh, have had a sneak peek at, and so <laughs> this good stuff. It's, yeah, some stuff nonfiction coming from Sandy. It's going to be quite quite good. So keep an eye out on that. And uh, now we're going to go over to the uh, the wonderful fellow himself, Ren Garcia. The League of Elder dares to be unusual. It's easy to be swept away in this bold and uninhibited landscape where fantastic heroes become old friends and sinister villains inhabit every dark corner. Dare to explore things best left alone. Each book is your lantern, lighting the path to a world never before seen. So what do you say? Are you weird enough for us? You bet yeah. you we are. <laughs> we are, Ren, and we love you, and thank you, and... And I uh, hope you might be able to, to fit in uh, coming down in person next month because we, we sure do miss seeing you in person. Yes, yes, but, we do. Uh, and thank you, as always, for your, your longtime support of the show. So, But tonight, without further ado, we, we, we're we a little bit early on, on our updates tonight, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in tonight's guest because our guest is on deck. And I'm excited because tonight we are bringing you a best-selling author who is just a phenomenal author when it comes to the world of mystery, thrillers, uh, suspense, and romantic suspense. And let me tell you, the award list is a long one, including you know Christie Awards and, and Inspirational Reader's Choice Awards, Carol Awards, and as of last, uh, just, just recently, the 2024 CELA Award. Uh, for romantic suspense and novel for the novel facing the enemy, and so yes, now you are you are beginning to sense who this is, and yes, for the first time on the Star Chamber Show live podcast it is my honor, and I'm excited to bring aboard for the first time Imaginarium 2024's guest of honor, Diane Mills, and and your microphone should be on. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a tremendous introduction. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, you it's all true. <laughs> yes, no, yes, it's, it's, true. it's all no hyperbole there. It's all it's all facts. <laughs> but thank you. It's great to have you aboard and, and yes, we're, it is. we're so excited about uh, seeing you just in a few short weeks and and tonight we're grateful that you could join us to uh, so our audience can uh, get to learn a little bit more about you and, and you know the ones that may not uh, know about your work yet and and uh, many many who are coming next month and so yeah it's great to have you aboard how are you doing i am doing really really well uh, i'm in houston the home of uh heat um mm -hmm. valleys, horses occasional hurricane and uh, and i love it and so i am just just sitting here in my office excited about the uh, the conference coming up and getting to meet new people and talk about our favorite subject writing yeah so I'm I'm just having trouble uh, sitting still here. I don't know what it'll be like when uh, I'm in Louisville. Uh, 
it, well, it is exciting and it is it is revitalizing people always tell us oh we feel so juiced up at the end of the weekend even though you're exhausted you know people are like man i'm ready to go home and write now i feel my juices flowing you know because you're with like-minded individuals you know and that that means a lot you know yeah. i'll tell you the truth about all of us writers we just don't have a lot of people who get us and no. so when we're in a huge uh conference and there are other writers and we look around and there's nobody saying well diane maybe you are a bit eccentric maybe you're just a tad bit bizarre maybe you should be on meds it, it really doesn't matter because we're all loving it yes and Oh, just that's the truth. That is the truth. And anyone we, who says their families haven't said that about them is probably not telling the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> that, that 100 percent. Yeah. The people that are in the box just do not get us people outside of the box. <laughs> it, it's hard. Not always. <laughs> that's what I said. I think we're the normal ones and they're all crazy. I, I think. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna believe I'm gonna believe that I think we're we're the normal ones, you know. Absolutely, Ab absolutely. Uh, how many normal people in a box can look out and create beautiful metaphors and poetry and screenplays and nonfiction and my favorite suspense? Uh, they can't do it. So no. we're the lucky ones. They yes. just have to. They just. They just have to read us. That's it. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> but, however, we we keep them entertained. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I got a good comment from the chat room though already. They, Duan said though he's wondering about the the box. He says he he thinks he sent his in to be recycled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but. You know, but it is a it is a, a gathering of the uh, of like minded folks, and that's uh, yes. and definitely it's a, yeah it's got a, a great energy. But it's a uh, yeah, and, it, and it's a place where a writer that's unpublished can come and meet somebody like yourself, and I think and, yep. and in a comf comfortable, accessible way. And I think that's one of the most exciting right. things about it, because yeah, because we can honestly you know tell everybody yeah you you come to this event you know you can have a chance to meet Diane Mills, and I think that and she will uh, talk to you. Yeah, you know, she will, she yeah. will talk to you, and she and, loves to share her 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 info. You know, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I really feel that the mark of an excellent writer no matter the genre is when they are willing to take everything that they've learned no matter how big or small mm -hmm. and make sure that another serious writer has that same information how else are we going to bring up the next generation of writers if we don't ensure quality mm -hmm. that's it that's Absolutely. it. And I, I, I see a need, a definite need for that. Uh, you know, just being an editor myself and, and dealing with a whole lot of writers and releases and so forth. And, I, and, and yes, the, I think the market is more accessible than ever before, you know, with eBooks yeah. and things like that, but uh, the uh, appreciation and, and, and dedication to the craft, I think sometimes slips a little bit off, off uh, the focus because everybody's worried about sales and, you know, and, and just getting books out, out there quickly and things like that. And I think that craft sometimes gets lost in the process. And that's one of the things that I love about with, with you coming is, is that yeah. it brings a laser focus back to the craft and the art and the, and the techniques of, of writing and, and becoming, you know, improving your, yourself as a writer. And I think that's uh, one of the, one of the great things about like, having you as a guest of honor, because wow, you're, I mean, Holly told me the workshops that you're going to be doing. I was, I, I mean, I was just like, wow. I mean, when I saw those, <laughs> so I must, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cause those look just phenomenal. And, uh, um, those they workshops. are, um, they are my favorites. Uh, I'd, I'd like to present and I like to talk about anything that has to do with writing. But as 
as you know, and, and the presenters know, all writers know, that it's very, very difficult to talk about one aspect of writing because it takes every literary technique to make a presentable, marketable manuscript. So I'm excited to be talking about my favorite subjects. Do I dare talk about them? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you like to share. Um, emotion and symbolism is something that is really near and dear to my heart because that's why readers keep turning pages or watching movies or reading the next line of poetry. It is because they are invested by the writer's ability to show emotion. And with that, with the emotion, I have to go back to something I heard from Donald Moss years ago. And he said, every line should have emotion. And at the time I thought, how am I going to do that? That's kind of over the top. But what he did was show uh, symbolism and the sound of our words and the rhythm of our sentences and, and just all kinds of things that uh, got me excited. So I was able to apply those techniques to my own writing and I'm thrilled to be sharing those with any who want to take that class. And another topic, oh, I love this. It's the antagonistic setting. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, you know, we fiction writers are always looking for those ways to force our character to change and grow. So nothing can be easy. I mean, if you've got an easy scene, it's one you've got to delete. So one way that we can do that as writers is to have an antagonistic setting, not just one or two, but ensure that every scene places that point of view character into a situation that's not easy. It's uncomfortable. And in writing suspense, it can be deadly. And um, so I, I want to show the, the writers how to look at setting as if it was an antagonist and to write a few paragraphs and make sure that everything that character does, that antagonistic setting is going to say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's stop right here. It isn't easy. And, um, and so I love that. And then then I get to talk in a few sessions about characterization. Yes. Characterization rules. At least that is my, that is my philosophy. I, well, confession time. I'm a seat of the pants writer, but I will do up to 17 pages of characterization before I get started. So I want to share with those who are married to their outlines or those who are uh -huh. hybrid or those who are like me that creating the best possible characters and allowing the worst possible things to happen to them right. to their personalities and their, their past experiences everything that happened before chapter one, line one. Um, that to me is exciting. So I'm willing to share, I'm willing and exciting and thrilled to share that. And it's hard yeah. for a lot of writers. They get attached to their characters and, and they don't, they don't like to see bad things happen, but, but sometimes you've, you've got, you got to let it flow. If that's where it's going, that's, that's, you know, it's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, it does. I uh, know that for uh, for sure. And life is filled with that, so it's got to be in our stories, too. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And that's, uh, wow, I mean, that's an amazing, I mean, it's a two-part workshop. It's scheduled in two two halves, uh, as I see it on, on that Saturday. And so that's a big one, yeah, the exploring the art of, uh, exploring the art of character. 
that's a bit that's a that's a nice size one holly <laughs> yeah it is that's gonna be a good yeah. one yeah, that's an cool. in-depth so yes any writer wanting to uh you know really up their character game uh, yeah i encourage them to to mm -hmm. definitely check that out because you're going into the meat and potatoes of characterization yes even add a little salt and pepper in there too <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah yeah so there is a uh, one workshop from you on each of the three days so so yeah folks be sure to look through your schedules to find them uh because we yeah. have see it's the friday that's the art of emotion and uh symbolism is taking place on the friday and then the saturday is the two-part uh, one, the, big, the really big one, exploring the art of character. And then Sunday is creating the antagonistic setting. I might even want to sit on on that one. If I can, yeah. I usually, Diane, I usually am like going around like a crazy man the first two days. It's just, you know, so many details, so many things going on. Usually Sunday is the one day that kind of things kind of finally are on cruise control where I can finally get out and about a little bit yeah. on the convention yeah and do what I'd like. Uh, so, so Sunday is perfect for me because I might, I might actually get able to sit on that one because I, I can't wait to hear you talk about it because I, I just yeah. recently, uh, my latest novel, I think the, the entire book is, is immersed in antagonistic settings in that book. So I, I, I definitely want to get your, your insight on, on that for sure. So uh, yeah, Sunday, I'm, I'm actually hoping I might be able to make that one, uh, you know, barring any duties to the convention, but uh, that's, that looks really good. They all they all look just amazing, and I hate the fact that I have to miss the other ones. But you know, the show must go on, and I have to, I have right. to be running it. So, <laughs> but so what uh, all yeah. genres have you written in? Uh, yeah. Let's see. My my favorite, my all time favorite, of course, is romantic suspense, and uh, the the romantic thread is always there. It depends on how long the uh, the hero and the heroine have uh, known each other for them to have an extreme like at the end or or another kind of uh -huh. yeah. And uh, I've done some straight suspense. Uh, I've done historical uh, suspense. I've done romantic historical suspense. And I've done uh, plain contemporary. I have, uh, I have some how-to books, uh, exploring the art of character, exploring the art of emotion and dialogue, exploring the art of plotting, uh, social media for today's writer, uh, those kinds of, of things. I love taking workshops and being able to add more meat to them and uh -huh. then eventually putting those into uh, a booklet for, uh, for writers. But I love story. I mean, we're all living a story, so let's right. read about, you know, about others. Uh, it is the way I look at life. It is the way that I, um, of course, that I write. You know, funny thing here, we'll be driving to the subdivision and somebody will have a uh, rolled up carpet at the curb and husband will say, oh, so-and-so just got new carpet. Well, that's not me. There's a dead body in there and I've got to find out who it is and what happened to <laughs> it. There you go. <laughs> And, you know, it's just, and as far as historicals are, when we're out in the country and there's beautiful, beautiful forests and, or we're in another state, not Texas, and there's tall mountains. And I'm thinking, okay, what kind of historical uh, character would live there, would, su would survive there? What kind of skills do they need? So I'm just always, always thinking story. And, oh, heaven forbid if I'm called for jury duty. <laughs> oh, oh, are you ever chosen? <laughs> you know what? No, I'm not. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. No, I just get the stuff at the beginning because, uh -huh. um, no, they, they, they don't want me. I <laughs> <laughs> can't imagine why. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's awesome. Well, that that's what you got to do, though. You know, you you got to pay attention to your surroundings. You got to, you know, that's where you draw. Um, you're, you're taking reality into your fictional world. You know, mm -hmm. that's that especially with characters. Oh man, you can be out for dinner somewhere, and you'll have this this person two tables from you that's just this great character you know and they're making a fuss or you know they're they're doing something loud or they're you know the, the way they dress or talk and and you're like oh man this has got to go into a book you know yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely or you're watching a, a movie and you're thinking i wouldn't write that the mm -hmm. way they have let, mm -hmm. Let's come in and do something different. Mm -hmm. Or or you're reading the headlines and you're wondering, hmm, what's between the lines here? Uh -huh. and, uh, just It's just wonderful. It's just a, uh, it's a way to survive in this world, which can be dangerous and unpredictable. So let's write about dangerous and unpredictable situations with a, with a good ending. There you go. Yes. Yeah, because yes. here, yes. yeah, yeah, that's the wonder of writing the story is you can create whatever ending you want. Mm -hmm. You are in total control. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to leave it to fate. Never. <laughs> you know, I really hope that the presenters and the writers uh, who are going to be with us in a couple of weeks, I hope they understand that I am totally approachable. The, the weird, crazy person that is speaking to them now doesn't change. <laughs> uh, I we, am, we've uh, told everyone that, you know, around oh, us yeah. that you are extremely approachable and you oh, want yeah. to share, you yeah, know. So and some of the people you already know that just love you, like uh, Virginia Smith and Hallie Bridgman. Uh, yes. Yeah, folks that just absolutely adore you and just are so excited that you're going to be there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they've, they've talked to us as well about, about uh, looking forward to, to catching back up with you in person. So, yeah. The, so yes, there's a, there's, there's, a, there's folks there that are really uh, looking forward to, to seeing you as well. Well, I'm Absolutely. looking forward to catching up and making yeah. these plans and hopefully being able to move some writer just a little bit closer to their publishing dreams and goals. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I think I was going to mention too, the Jenny, I think Jenny is uh, coming back from Ireland just in time <laughs> to, to be there. Yeah. For the, for the weekend. She's on a trip. So, yeah. She's oh. over in Ireland right now. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Today I emailed her and I said, what are you wearing to the awards banquet? And yeah. she said, or the award ceremony. And she said, I haven't even thought about that. I'm still in Europe. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I have to say, speaking of award ceremonies, it was very fun for me because I had, I had, uh, you know, major page on the site. So underneath your bio, I put, you know, a list of your awards. And the top one had you as a finalist for the 2024 SELA uh, Award for your novel, Facing the Enemy. And we got to update that. Thank, yeah. uh, thank, thank heaven that the award took place before Imaginarium. So we actually got to update it and announce it that you uh, you won uh, in that category uh, just recently. So congratulations. congratulations. Speaking of awards, uh, banquets and so forth, congratulations. And that was at the uh, the present. Were you were you at the Blue Ridge uh, Christian Writers yeah. Conference when that yes. was presented? Yes, yeah, I was. No one was more surprised than me. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but that you know, and and I know uh, for a serious moment here, that was probably the hardest book I'd ever written because um, the the things that the heroin experienced um i had experienced and so it was a uh, a tribute to a son that we lost and how, and the best way for me to honor him was to create a story in which someone else experienced the same thing and um and achieved healing so 
to have that book win was a real blessing. Oh, that's Nick. awesome. Yeah, because I, uh, I got a comment from a writer you may know who was at the c convention there, Peggy Lovelace Ellis, who who was just over the moon that you, you won, the, won that award. And, and yeah, she's really excited to hear that you were coming to Imaginarium as our guest of honor, but uh, that she was one that was at that uh, recent uh, conference and got yeah. to see you, got to see the award. So, but yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. It sounds like an amazing book. Cause I did, I did look up the book uh, when I, when I saw that and uh, yeah, it definitely looks like one I'm going to have to have to dig into once I get free time a little bit after, after <laughs> imaginary. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but. We could just read all the books that we wanted to. Right. Oh, all that's what I said. Sitting in our offices and downloaded on yes. our Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I know. know. I said I'll never get through my to be, you know, to read pile. I said, I hope, I hope God blesses us and and, and we actually get some reading time in heaven because uh yeah, I, I really I really want to read these books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh, that's oh. the only way. I'll tell, you I'll tell you something funny. Um I said you know, family's family, and I'm Diane, and so I'm Diane. So I said to my sister, uh, have you read any of my books? And she said, no, sissy, but I tell you what, you fill up my coffin when I die, and when I get to heaven, I'll read them all then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, yeah, it, it will require, uh, yeah, eternity for me because that's the only way I'll get yeah. through my my to be read list, and because it's so big right now, <laughs> I can barely keep yeah. up with, the, yeah, some of it. But, but I will, but I will work one of yours in on this side of the uh, of the world. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> well, I'll get I one. I'll get read, one read. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I want to read yours that has all the antagonistic settings oh, you were talking yes. about. <laughs> yes. But uh yeah, I am looking forward to that. And uh but again, um yeah, with the uh the recent uh award and, and the novel, um t tell your uh I'd love to have you share a little bit about the book uh from, you know, cuz I with like uh, as far as like, you know, I, however many spoilers you want to share or not. Uh but I'd love to for you to tell folks about this particular book and and what it's about. So maybe they can try it out too. Okay. Uh, well, first I have to say that in 2021, we lost a son in a hit and run pedestrian accident. Oh, uh, well, I guess you don't call it an accident when it's a hit and run, but in any event, um, I journaled and wrote down all the emotions, the, the memories, uh, angry at God, just angry at the person who had, hit him, just all those things. Well, it was like a month later and I needed to get started on this book. And I looked at the book and I thought, oh my goodness, I had put in, I had placed in the synopsis and because I'm a seat of the pants writer, my synopsis are very lean. And, uh, and it was about a, uh, a young woman, an FBI agent, who uh, witnessed her brother hit by a hit and run. Oh. And um, I thought, well, this, I guess, happened for a reason. So what I did was massaged my emotions from my journal to fit into the character's personality. And so it was my healing book, my healing novel, and yeah, there were some pretty raw and sacred uh, feelings in that particular book. But the story itself, uh, because I just write in a lot of different directions, she, she, was a, she worked the division of the FBI uh, with, about crimes against children. And so she was uh, delving into... Uh, an area of uh, baby trafficking. And um, so bad guys kind of thought, well, we just need to eliminate her. But her brother pushed her out of the way. So that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Yeah. The hero is a great guy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, kind of hated to let him go, but he married her. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, that's that's a bit about what the story 
uh, is about, uh, as I said, it's close to my heart. Uh, for five years, she worked in the Violent Crimes Against Children Division of, of the Houston FBI. And, you know, my books, most all of them are set in Houston. And that makes it easy for me to walk their paths and experience the same heat and hurricanes, you know. Yeah. Uh, right, it, right. It just makes it more real, more credible for me. See, that's smart. You know, if, to, to use your surroundings like the town because, you know, some people want to set it real far away and then you have to take, you know, unless you want to take the trip, you know, use that as a business expense, which is a good idea. And you can get, you can do that. But yeah, <laughs> you know, but yeah, using your surroundings that you're familiar with, that you know, um, you, you could more easily access the town records or, you know, uh, yeah, walk the, the streets, uh, you know, and look at uh, different perspectives and see it through your own eyes, you know, much yes. easier than you can, you know, if it's 500 miles away. Oh, yes. I wrote two novels set in Sudan. And you know me, I went there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, just before Easter, I was working on a book that I am now doing the edits for, in which uh, a part of the book took place in the Guadalupe Mountains in West Texas, an mm. off the grid area. So you know where husband and I went. And trust <laughs> me, it is not a place you want to get sick or have your car break down. I would yeah. assume not. <laughs> and, uh, it was a great trip, but it, it, those help yes it helps the antagonistic setting right. but it also the sensory perception that's it the people who live there right work there you just get all these yummy details right yeah uh -huh. well, i imagine uh, sudan i mean that must have been a trip because because right now i mean it's just a mess with the civil war going on over there right now but uh was it did you have any uh, danger when was it or were things kind of calm uh, at the time you went over there no they were not calm <laughs> yeah, oh, was in, uh, i was in juba and i uh -huh. stayed in an episcopalian compound actually they put me in a closet and, but that was fine because that beach sitting on the banks of the Nile River in a tent and between uh -huh. two-legged predators and the ones that crawled out of the Nile, I consider uh -huh. that pretty lucky. Right. Um, yeah, first day I was there, uh, a bridge over the Nile blew. Um, oh. It, it was... Uh, Touch and go. Uh, Touch yeah. and go, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say... That, uh, husband said, "You will never take another trip unless I'm with you." <laughs> so is, your, is, your, is your next book set in North Korea? <laughs> is that the next? No, one? no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not going to do that one. Not going to do that one. <laughs> oh, that's great. But that's that's well. I mean, it, truly, though, I mean, as Holly was referring to, though, I mean, when you you know, have really lived and breathed in the different settings, I mean, it does come through your work and really helps with that uh, suspension yep. of disbelief as far as really connecting with the writer and making it you know really live and breathe and be real to the yes. reader. I mean, just a very uh, well. You get those perspectives, yeah, those perspectives visual. Yeah. Um, you know, all the sensory, the tactile. You get the visual. You get the yeah. the the scent, the smell. Of this. Yeah. You know, and like she said, the people, and yeah, I mean, you, you yeah, experience sure. all that mm -hmm. firsthand. You can you can definitely bring it through to your work a whole lot more believable. Yeah. Oh, too funny. Th well, there were a lot of serious, not so funny things that happened there. But two things happened that were a little on the um, humorous side. One uh, uh, is I wanted to go outside of Juba and just see what it was all about and so they hired a trusted young man i get in the car and he said i have no air conditioning but you've got to promise me right now that you will keep your door locked and um your window rolled up oh so, geez 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. So we had a couple of scary experiences. But when I got back to the compound, I took off my shoes and socks and my toe polish peeled off. Only a woman would understand how hot it was for Jeez. toe polish to peel off. And oh, the I other one uh, that was really quite funny is uh, at this Episcopalian uh, compound, there were uh, a couple of pastors and diphtheria had broken out in Juba. And so there wasn't any clean water and they were going to take barrels to the Nile, bring it back and boil it so that they would have suitable water. They asked me if I wanted to go along. And I thought, okay, I'll go along. Shows you how gullible I am. <laughs> and um, we went to this part of the Nile, and I looked out there. There wasn't a single woman, and none of the men had any clothes on. They were out taking a bath in the Nile River. Oh, no. And so they all had a good joke on me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, uh, so, oh, 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 you're like, oh, I won't do that again. <laughs> no, no, won't do that again. But that's, you learn. It, it was, that's it. That's an experience, though. See, you, you can write about it. Yeah, put it in a book. <laughs> put it in a book. That's right. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah, that's whew, that's a lot. That That's a lot to take in. I'm glad you made it back safe, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that's that's got you long lasting memories and writing material for, you know, quite some time there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's everything we experience. Y'all know that. Yeah. No matter what we use, what we go through, we can use it somewhere. Oh and, yeah. And not to discount anything. I mean, even if you're going to a family reunion and you get stuck by Uncle George um, or Aunt Sally, who are not your favorite. There is a story there. That's oh, yes. right. <laughs> or That's two. True. A story or two or three. <laughs> yeah, some of those. <laughs> we, we just had a family yeah. reunion, and, yeah. and, and boy, my, my, uh, my one cousin sat there and, and talked to my grandson, my 13 year old grandson. They sit there, and I know talked for an hour because my cousin was telling him stories about my dad you know their grand their great grandfather uh because he'd pa- he's passed away now a couple of years ago and he was telling all kinds of stories when he was younger and things he done her mm-hmm. and that's what i said it you know that's stuff that you know they, oh, they yeah. would have never learned nowhere else and when mm-hmm. you know so yeah it is neat to when you sit down and talk to people and and hear them out and even if they're long-winded sit and hear them out because mm-hmm. you may learn a few things you know well, you will learn yeah Ab- absolutely and those those stories they frame us they're yeah. in our they're in our dna you know those sure. are, those are our people yep yep that's true it's very true oh, yeah. that's wonderful but yeah that that makes us better writers better uh better i guess spies you know makes you a better <laughs> writer because yeah being out you know but you got you gotta watch you gotta pay attention to everything because yeah you never know what you can use oh my goodness yes and i love i've loved the times that i've been able to interview uh fbi agents and uh, yeah. secret service and uh texas uh rangers and Ooh. Oh, you know, these, these people, they just, well, I could just write about them and live vicariously through their lives. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's true. That's true. And yeah, uh, yeah I was going to say, I imagine you have uh, interacted and interviewed and, and uh, well, quite a few folks in that quite area are, yeah. look at, looking at your books over the years. And uh, yeah, that must be a quite an experience to get the, the kind of insights that you probably get from them. Oh, Oh, yes. And the, the tremendous uh, relationships that have been forged. Uh, I, I remember some years ago uh, working with a media coordinator at Houston's FBI, and we were looking through solved cold cases. 
And she said, I think these couple of these would be good stories. And, um, and one of them in particular that I wrote about a, a little girl who had been brutally assaulted and was now a young woman, uh, I was able to talk to her as an adult. Wow. And, oh, wow. And, yeah. you know, that, oh, that was touching. That was one of those uh, memory makers. And just, oh, my goodness. I also did the ATF thing, the Citizens Academy ATF. Oh, I did neat. it for, for the FBI, but I did it also for um, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Wow. Thing. So it was um, an evening in which all the the classes were taught by those who had experienced or worked the cases. And, oh, I love those. Oh, but I, I remember the ATF, there was this guy came in and he said, I'm retired, so I can tell you, tell you folks about this. And uh, he had been the first agent inside the, uh, the Branch Davidian in Waco. Some oh, years wow. Um, and lost a finger there. And so he oh, was geez. able to talk about what I refer to as the good, the bad, and the ugly, what they did right, what they should, what they did wrong, yeah. what they could have done differently. And those are the conversations that I just feel like a sponge. I, yeah. I want to hear it all. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have been in on that one. Uh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah I remember when all that yeah. went down. Oh, yeah. I've done so much research and read so many things that and yeah, there there was a lot that was that could have been done differently. And and, and yeah, I, I would love to sit down and talk with some yeah. of those individuals and get their perspective. Yeah. Cause you know, we don't always get it on, on documentaries and we don't no, you know no. they 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 have an agenda to fill and yeah. so we don't always get the full story. You know? Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they're more candid with you, uh, Diane, when they're yeah. talking one on one with them in a private setting as yeah. opposed to media. I'm sure you're getting you're getting a little more to the story. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, just like we writers love to talk about what we do, um, mm -hmm. people who enjoy their careers, they want to talk about what they do. If they yep. enjoy it, they're passionate, they're excited, they have stories to tell, and. Those are the kinds of people I love. I don't care if they are a bank teller or uh, a government official. If they enjoy right. what they're doing, they are going to have some fun stories to relate. That's true. Without Absolutely. a doubt. Absolutely. Do you get a lot of, uh, I, I was wondering, what, a lot of feedback from uh, law enforcement readers that are in law enforcement and yeah. what, kind of, what kind of reactions do you get from them as far as that, that end of the thing? Well, so far I have been very, very fortunate because the responses I've received have been positive. That's why I'm a big stickler on, uh, on the research. Um, yes. And so far I've been very, very lucky. I remember my, uh, my friend at, at uh, Houston's FBI, one of the agents came in and he said, my wife just read this book and had me read it. And it was one that she had, she would read them and tell me if I had the information right or wrong. And he says, I want to know which agent in here wrote this. And uh, so that uh -huh. was a huge compliment to me and nice. to her for her willingness to uh, read my books and and point me in the right places when I didn't have information right. Uh, nice. Yes. Well, and protocol, you know, you got to really be. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people, you know, it or oh, it. I, I was a nurse for over 20 years oh. and and. Uh, I, I watch shows or I read books and I tell Stephen, I said, Stephen, this is not how this is done. This is not realistic. This would never happen. All the time. They didn't do their research, you All know, and time. it burns me up. Yeah, yeah. It burns me up. I'm like, if you're going to write it or try to put it on TV or something, there's those of us out here that know better 
do do your research, you know, <laughs> do, <laughs> do it right. Do your story justice, you no. know? Oh, abs yes. I'm right there with you. We will, we will have our own parade with that. Yes. Yes. Oh, just try, drives me batty. I hate it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's why I tell people research, research, research. It is, it is very important. And yeah, it might seem daunting at times, but, but you know, if you're going to write it, do it right. Do it right the first time. So you don't have to get reamed in the, in the reviews and comments, you know, because you, you didn't do it right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for sure. And they'll do it too. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll, get, they'll call you out. Yeah, they will. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. You better believe it. Get your police procedures right. <laughs> Yes, definitely. But what is your favorite? What's your favorite? I know you love suspense. You said you love romance suspense. You think you think that's your your favorite too, right? I love the sus suspense aspect of it, and seeing two different personalities um, uh, respect each other, uh, learn to like each other, and work through personality differences while they're solving a crime and uh, to, to form that relational, you know, so I do like the romantic suspense, even though I will say that many times the romance is the hardest for me to write because I'm in a limited amount of time. And I don't want to, 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 uh, some young girl to read a book and think, oh, I can meet this guy and in two weeks we're going to get married. I, I don't want to leave that unrealistic um, type of feedback. I don't want that. Right. But I love the suspense. Oh, my goodness. Uh, psychological suspense. Yes. Um, oh, yes. I, so you, you are you heavily into true crime then? Uh, yes. Very much. Yes. Yeah. Oh, speaking to my heart. Yeah, yeah, very, very, uh, very much into that. What what motivates someone to be that? Cruel? Yeah. Uh, is it in their DNA? Is it something mm -hmm. that happened to them? Is it their life experience? Uh, mm -hmm. Getting to the bottom of that, I really do enjoy that. I think if I hadn't been a writer, I would have been a psychologist and I probably yes. have been the type who took the work home with me. So maybe it's better that I'm a writer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Come on, serial killer. Come on home with me. <laughs> well, see, that's what I try to tell people. Cause you know, people say, why do you like true crime? You like to hear about people. It ain't that it's the whole psychological aspect to it. What has triggered a person? To go and do the things, say like Jeffrey Dahmer, for instance. What you know, you you want to know what's going on? What, what was going on in his head? What triggered that? How could a human being, you know, go to those lengths to do those things and and you know keep doing it? And it's fascinating to me. It's the mind. The mind is fascinating. Um, does this particular horrible person? have a conscience right uh you know those those kinds of things like i said i would have i love psychology uh, i have two three very very close friends i don't know if they uh hate to see me coming when i say can we have breakfast <laughs> oh they're <laughs> like uh oh yeah i need to here we go <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> That's Getting funny. their brain picked, <laughs> but that, yeah, that's great. But that's that makes that makes great characters. That makes your writing that much better because you took the time to put the work in and invest to learning. You know, yeah. to do it right. Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of. I sort of kind of am OCD when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it shows through your work, you know. That's why you've won the plethora of awards that you have, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it shines through, you know. It does, yeah. 
And uh, so what do you have uh, as far as uh, uh, coming up on your writing schedule and release schedule? What's what's on the horizon for you? I have next? A, um, a book come out coming out September 3rd. It's already it's out there for pre-order by Tyndale. It's called Lethal Standoff. And uh, it's about a female negotiator. She is a private negotiator and she is called to uh, from Houston to uh, the southwest border of our country to work on the release of 15 illegal immigrants held by two Texas brothers. And it, it is not what it seems. Ooh. Uh, so it is a, uh, a topic that's in the news, of course, in Texas. Right. And, right. and I wanted to show all the different viewpoints of the undocumented immigrants and mm -hmm. the, um, the Border Patrol agents and the negotiator and the journalist. I, I wanted a complete picture that is still rather obscure in the end. Does that make sense? It yeah, does. Cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 And it def definitely is a, a, a very timely topic and yeah, that will yep. be another one I have to mark down on my, my list of, <laughs> of Diane Mills books. That sounds yeah. Good. And yeah, and I lo love the concept too about uh, yeah having something with a, with a complete spectrum of, of viewpoints kind of integrated into the story and, because there always the is. Mm -hmm. There's more than one side to every story. Absolutely. And and yeah, by showing that, I mean that mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yep. it's that much more believable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that, that's how I got interested in that. I don't know how much time we have and I don't want to run over what you're doing. Oh, you go ahead. Um, I love the idea of a negotiator and I am a big one for using master class as uh, research how to write whatever you need master class has it and I saw that Chris Voss who now uh, owns and, and directs and leads out the black swan group it's all about negotiation but he started out in the FBI by initiating a, um, a division of negotiators and training them. Oh, that really piqued my interest. So huh. I took his 15 video classes and then I thought, oh my goodness, what about survival, wilderness survival? So Jesse Cribbs was on there. I did all kinds of things online with uh, Bear Grylls and formed this character who not only had negotiation skills, but knew how to take care of herself too. And um, uh, anyway, I, I just got all excited about that. But you know what? If we don't get excited about our stories, nobody else will. Well, that's oh. it. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. that's the truth. That, that's it. You got to put in the, the work to see the results. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, yeah. and like I said, once a person thinks they know everything, well, they might as well give it up because uh, <laughs> you in the wrong field, honey. Because, uh, yeah, one person ain't going to know everything. We learn something every day and, and we keep learning. And, and that's how you, you get better at the craft. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Always. Mm -hmm. One of my big thingies for writers, well, what do you recommend? Read every day, write every day, pray every day, and mm -hmm. make sure you you know exactly what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Yep. yep. And, and I, and I love the fact that you emphasize reading every day because I can't tell you how many times I get so oh. frustrated online when I hear all these writers say, Oh, I, I'm not, I haven't read anything in forever. Or I don't read. I don't much. have time to read. I don't have time to read. And well, I'm then like, you don't well, need to be writing. Yeah. Cause yeah, to become a better writer, you, you, you definitely do need to you know, read. be reading. And, and reading outside of your genre um, is, you know, at times yep. and, and uh, writer, other kinds of writers, other styles. And there's so much to learn from all the different uh, types of writers and, and other genres, uh, even outside of the ones that you write in. There's oh. so much. Mm -hmm. 
wonderful, wonderful uh, stories, nonfiction, memoirs, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. biographies. Oh, and, and you just, to me, when you can pick up that voice right on the first page, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, then I'm all over it because I fall in love with the voice of the writer. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, what, so what is coming up with you after uh, Imaginarium? Because we always love to, to ask our guests, you know, if they do have other appearances or other conventions and, and uh, things coming up uh, later. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we definitely would love to give you a chance to, to spotlight those things. Well, uh, because I have the book coming out in September, uh, the schedule in September is uh, filled with uh, signings and appearances and speaking uh, venues here in the Houston area. Um, there, you know, I've got blog tours and things like that, but that's online. Thank you. And uh, then in the fall, I've got some. Uh, some conferences, writing conferences to teach. I'm always doing something, whether I'm on the road with it or uh, in front of my computer screen. Well, we're sure glad to be uh, hosting you in Kentucky here very yes. shortly. <laughs> we couldn't be more excited. So, well, yeah. I'm very, very grateful. And, and the more we get to know about more about you and learn about your work and the more excited uh, that we get. <laughs> to, yes. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we, uh, you are really we know my ego. <laughs> I, I was going to say, we've heard nothing but good things from, oh, from yeah. Hallie and, and Jenny. So, yeah, and, and, uh, and others. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we've yeah. heard several people. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking forward to meeting you very shortly and very excited about, yeah, three, three workshops, which I, I can't be, can't say how grateful we are for that. I mean, one each day. And, and uh, yes, I think our, our guests are going to absolutely uh, love meeting you. And, and I think you're going to have a great time and, and find, you know, that our weekend is a, is a, is a battery recharger, as we call them. Yes. Yeah, it really does. Yes. It gives you a lift. <laughs> I think you'll find that too. I am sincerely grateful for the opportunity yeah. to teach and meet other writers. That um, that is very satisfying, very fulfilling for me. Yeah. So thank you. So uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you very soon. And, and thank you yes. for taking your time tonight. To, so everybody can get to know you a little bit in advance yeah. Uh, yeah, of getting to see you in person. And, uh, and so, but yeah, before we go though, is there anything else that you, that, you'd like to mention that we, that we didn't talk about. about if anybody has any questions or or wants to talk to me or just wants to reach out my email is diane d-i-a-n-n -N, at dianemills.com and i will get back with you and yes and that and that's my next question yeah uh, how, where you want to have folks go to find you and that yeah dianemills.com Mm -hmm. uh, being a main site. And, and of course I do know that you're on uh, uh, social media platforms as well. And uh, any, any ones you emphasize in particular. For your, I your, your... love them all because people have different preferences. So it doesn't matter to me if it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, any of, any of those, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm ready. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, Diane. I'm going to turn it over to Holly to round out the show, but I am really looking forward to meeting you and I am looking forward to diving into the pages of Facing the Enemy and congrats on the brand new uh, CELA award. That is just great. Yes, it is great. But yes, thank you for, uh, you know, taking the time out with us tonight. And uh, yeah, look very forward to seeing you here in just a few weeks. It's uh it's a coming quick and, and thank you for sharing, you know, all your knowledge, um, with no, our attendees and listeners. I have you welcome to. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I really do. And, and I think that does, uh, well, I know that helps us grow, you know, uh, it takes a village and that's the truth. And we got to look out for each other. True. True. <laughs> all right, Diane, we will talk to you soon. Okay. And, um, 
you can you can share the playback. This will be available for playback. It'll be on uh, iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, all that yeah. stuff. You know, Amazon yeah. here in just uh, you know a little bit, and you can you can share that with your friends and family and your fans. I will do that. I so that for sure. take a listen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you have a great night and. Um, Everybody out there, join us next Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Another great show, another great guest. And for the rest of the week, be creative. Good night, all. Good night, all.